Hey, Eric Becker, naturopath. Thank you for checking out my video. We're going to talk about psyllium husks or Plantago ovata. So psyllium is a plant that goes back many thousands of years. People have used this plant, the seeds of this plant, for digestive problems going back a long, long time. So it's used often to ease gut, gut conditions. When I first started practicing a long time ago, in fact, before I started practicing, I used to work in a health food shop way back in the 80s. And people would often come in looking for aids to ease their gut. You know, if they had IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, or they had a condition like Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, you know, like an inflammatory bowel condition, they're looking for something to settle the tummy down. So I would often grab a packet of psyllium husk and say, here, give this a go. It's only like two bucks. Give this a shot. So the two key things I'd often recommend when I worked in the shop were slippery elm bark powder, which comes from a beautiful big elm tree, it's like the pink in the bark. It's that one, and also the, uh, the Alvada seeds, so the psyllium husks, the psyllium husks or seeds of the husks, okay? So the difference between the, if we have a look at the um, slippery elm bark powder and the psyllium, the slippery elm bark powder, you put that, it's basically a finely ground powder. You put that in water, it swells up, gets a bit sort of like soft and gooey, it's really nice and soothing for the gut and especially good for inflammatory bowel condition. That's the slippery elm. The, the psyllium, however, is more of a bulker, like a stool bulker. So it sucks up water, attracts water. It forms like a nice big mass in the gut and it moves things through nicely. So some people use it like as a one-off, you know, if they get constipated here or there, they might take some psyllium in a glass. You know, if they're traveling, for example, drink that and it will just ease the bowel a little bit more. My recommendation is not to use it every single day because it can have a bit of an irritating or a scouring action on the gut. Some of the husks can be a little bit sharp inside the tummy. For most people, this won't be a problem, but if you've got uh, diverticulitis, like little bowel pockets, you'll need to be careful uh, consuming psyllium because I certainly had complaints from you know people about my age, like 60s, 60s, 70s, uh, who have issues there with their tummy, and they can even get a bit of bowel pain uh, when they have psyllium rare but i've seen it happen so if you're a little bit older person i'd probably say be careful with it uh, especially if you've got known issues with inflammatory bowel disease like you know crohn's especially uh, and if you know you have diverticulitis then i'd just be a little bit on the cautious side with psyllium and i'd go more for the slippery elm bark powder but most people under say 50 could easily take psyllium you know quite regularly make sure you have this stuff with plenty of water uh, and it blends quite well with it. You know, you can just drink straight down the hatch. Have it between meals. A good time to have it often is early in the morning or sort of like mid-afternoon-ish. Uh, make sure one good, you know, tall glass of water with it. The people who benefit best from psyllium, obviously, are the water drinkers. If you're a coffee tea drinker and don't drink water at all or much, don't take psyllium uh, because the caffeine can, can have a dehydrating effect and you can get a bit blocked up if you're, you know, not lubricated on the inside. So, and the other last thing I'll leave you with is it's a prebiotic. So what I've also noticed is people who regularly take slippery on bark powder and, you know, things like the, uh, like this particular uh, seed here, the psyllium husk, uh, they tend to have high bifidobacteria counts and people who don't have them. So I certainly noticed a correlation in the stool test results on people taking psyllium as opposed to people who don't regularly take psyllium. So it is a prebiotic and it feeds the good bacteria. So that's a little um, explanation on psyllium there for you. The other last thing, the very last thing, is be careful with buying some products like Metamucil, uh, uh, psyllium husk, because they can contain a lot of artificial sugars in them. Okay, and that's why people like to take them, so they taste sweet. So Metamucil is not really a good product, in my opinion, because of the artificial sugars. If you're going to take psyllium, buy straight psyllium from the health food shop. All right? Thanks for tuning in.